with us getting into November now, we start to get to the point in time where we look a little bit ahead to WrestleMania season. And one of the topics that always comes up every year when we start entering into WrestleMania season is, is the Undertaker going to wrestle one more match? And if he is, who's going to be his opponent at WrestleMania? Now, since the streak went kaputskis at WrestleMania 30, good job, WWE, ah, it has killed a little bit of the luster from seeing The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I mean, seeing Taker is still a really, really big deal, a really, really huge deal, arguably the greatest superstar, if you want to use that term, the company has ever had and probably will ever have when you look at the sustained run of excellence at or near the top of the card for an over two decade plus stretch. I mean, you can put Taker's resume up against anybody's. So there's a lot of deep seated loyalty there when it comes to the undertaker and wanting to see him for somebody like me, it represents a chance to go back to my childhood in some ways. In a sense, it's a way to see the ultimate special attraction. It's a way to pay respect to a man who has meant so much to the company and so much to so many fans such as myself. Now, with the news that The Undertaker is going to be appearing in a little over a week on SmackDown Live, it's got a lot of people starting to think, you know, hey, maybe Taker's coming back to work WrestleMania again, and if so, who's his WrestleMania opponent going to be? Uh, there was some thought initially that WrestleMania 32 was the end of the road, and the way I'll put it with Taker is, when it's his last WrestleMania match, I'll see it when I believe it. It's that type of deal. I just, I don't know when the man will stop working at WrestleMania, but I don't know that it's going to happen anytime in the next year or two for sure. I think he's got a couple of more manias if he so desires and if his body can hold up. But let's just assume for right now he's potentially getting ready to come back for at least one more trip uh, down the WrestleMania way. One more journey through WrestleMania season. So we get to this and we now start to think about uh, who will or who should The Undertaker face at WrestleMania 33. And I'm going to talk more about who should The Undertaker face at WrestleMania 33. Now, I don't really see a ton of options for him. He just worked Shane McMahon at WrestleMania 32. Um, Bray Wyatt to me is a no. and He already did that at 31. Uh, Brock Lesnar, no. You've already went down that road. You've already fought that battle. I don't really see those as feasible options. Unfortunately, Sting's not an option, and that's unfortunate. Um, so you're really limited, in my opinion, in terms of who you could really send at The Undertaker for WrestleMania. And there's a few guys that I could think of on the list, potentially. You know, in terms of some wild card names, you could throw out a name maybe like a Rusev, this is a guy that I think has done a pretty good job of getting over. This is a guy that would be somewhat believable uh, for being able to give The Undertaker a run. But, you know, at the end of the day, The Undertaker has only lost once at WrestleMania, and that was to Brock Lesnar. And we've seen what the company's done with him ever since that point. Do you really get the sense that the WWE believes in Rusev to the same level as they do a Brock Lesnar? My answer is no, So I don't know if they would give Rusev that spot at Mania. Um, then you got somebody like a Roman Reigns, and the only way you could really pull that off is you would have to fully commit to flipping Roman Reigns to the dark side, make him a heel, and the WWE has shown very little to no desire to do that, and I don't believe that that's the path that they're going down. Dean Ambrose, please, that just doesn't work on so many different levels. Um, so who else is there? You know, you, some people could say, well, there's Kevin Owens. You know, maybe if you really wanted to establish him as a top guy in the company, it would require him dropping the title. But, you know, and I ask you in all seriousness, when it comes to working at WrestleMania, would you rather defend the world title or fight for the world title? Or would you rather wrestle The Undertaker? Personally, I think you're fucking crazy if you would choose working the title match over working the Taker. That's my opinion. I think you're insane. Um, I don't know, again, that WWE is going to want to put Kevin Owens in that spot, especially because in order for Kevin Owens to get over in the way that he would need to get over, it would require a certain type of match that I'm not sure that The Undertaker could physically deliver at 50-plus years or whatever the hell he is age. 
So I just don't see it being a good stylistic fit. And from a, a health and physical well-being standpoint, I don't think it's a good choice to put The Undertaker in the ring with Kevin Owens. I mean, who else do you have? AJ Styles? There might be a little bit, and I emphasize a little bit of an appeal to having AJ Styles. You know, especially if you want to work Taker as his traditional face self and you want to have a strongly established heel for him to work against. You know, AJ Styles is the type of ring veteran. Well, well he's a bit spotty in terms of needing to incorporate spots in his match to tell a story. He still is a guy that can actually bother to tell a story while he happens to do some spots. You know, he would be the type of veteran that could help call a match and could do some of the things necessary to make sure that a Taker match worked at WrestleMania. It wouldn't be the worst opponent for him. I just don't see the company going there. I think they have other plans for AJ Styles. Uh, I've heard some talk about Goldberg, and I don't think that's happening. You know, assuming at Survivor Series, let's say they have Goldberg lose to Brock Lesnar. You know, if they were going to do Goldberg again with another match, I don't really think they would send him at Taker because, again, you know, there's no guarantee that Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, or Survivor Series is going to be any damn good. Do you really want to take the risk that Undertaker stinks up the joint with Goldberg at WrestleMania? Is Goldberg really the type of veteran guy that you can count on to do the things necessary to protect Taker, to help Taker go along and have one of the best matches of the night? The answer to that is very simply no. It, there's just no way. So I think that's not a realistic, feasible option whatsoever either. I think you really only have two feasible, realistic options at this point in time. And unfortunately, that means i got to go to the breakfast club. It's either Randall Keith Orton or John Cena. Now, in terms of Randy Orton, I know they're kind of teasing this whole uh, shit with him aligning with the Wyatt family and potentially turning them heel. Now, if you do especially turn Randy Orton heel... The dynamics are there where you're involving Kane and you've got Bray Wyatt involved and then you throw The Undertaker into the mix. That from a story-wise standpoint, it could potentially fit together and the pieces could gel and work with the story of getting Randy Orton and The Undertaker to WrestleMania. And as far as Randy Orton, he would be the type of veteran guy that wouldn't have to do a ton of crazy spots. But these are two guys that have worked together in the past and that, frankly, at a much younger point in Randy Orton's career and a much less experienced point in Randy Orton's career, I thought these two had some tremendous matches together, WrestleMania 21 and beyond. You know, so there is a reasonable expectation for performance there. Orton's got a, a decade plus of experience on top of what he had in 2005 while Taker's not the same physically. He's got all of that experience and ring psychology. You know, there's a reasonable belief, reasonable belief that a Randy Orton heel versus Undertaker face match at WrestleMania 33 could work. And it probably would work, especially when you incorporate some other story elements. I, I, th I think it could work relatively nicely, if for no other reason than Randy Orton would be the right type of guy to help call and lead a match that makes The Undertaker look good while making themselves look good, and they can have one of the better featured matches at WrestleMania. And let's face it, when you talk about The Undertaker, you don't want to throw any schlub or schmuck at him or any Johnny-come-lately at him. You want somebody that's at least somewhat established. You know, unless it's somebody that's brand new and is really fucking white-hot over. And if you say Finn Balor, go fuck yourselves! I'll waste an Undertaker on that piece of shit. Kiss my ass. But Randy Orton? You know, he could incorporate baby oil in his in-ring shenanigans and everything. Um, it, I think it works. And if WWE ultimately decides to go down that direction, I understand it. And I get it. It's not the path I would ultimately choose, but I get it, and I don't know that I would have a ton of gripe with it, because in the big picture of things, a lot of it makes sense. But for me, you've only got a limited amount of matches for Undertaker at WrestleMania, in period in general. Is that one more match, two more matches, three, four, five more matches? I don't know. But for however long I've got The Undertaker, I want as much as possible to get the most out of his appearances. And that means I want to have the most interesting, compelling matchup that has the opportunity to draw the most money. And by far, the best option, and the only real option to me, 
to draw a lot of money at WrestleMania on top of what you already would because it's WrestleMania is John Cena versus The Undertaker. Now, granted, this is not a dream matchup in terms of Sting versus The Undertaker, I, you know, Stone Cold versus The Undertaker, Rock versus The Undertaker, da 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 da. It's not that. But for many years now, a lot of people have talked about, myself included, you know, what would happen with John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Now, granted, the dynamics of this would fit together so much more effectively and so much more swimmingly if the streak was still intact. If you had the fucking Superman monster John Cena coming after The Undertaker and his streak at WrestleMania, just imagine the intrigue and interest and the concern about how the finish is actually going to get booked and what the hell could potentially happen. I mean, just think about it. But you don't have the streak. But you still have a lot to work with here. You know, you got to a point in time with Cena where, frankly, you're getting to a similar situation where you don't know how many more WrestleMania matches you're going to get out of John Cena where he, before he starts to say, eh, enough's kind of enough. You start to wonder if he's already kind of getting to that enough is enough point. So as a result, after that decade plus of massive investment of plunking so many tools and resources into John Cena to try and prop him up as your top prop in WWE, the WWE needs to hurry up and get on maximizing that return on the investment. Just like they want to, with the limited amount of time they still have Taker in the ring, maximize on the return on the two and a half decades plus of investment they put into Undertaker. Now, why wouldn't you? Now, I know the thought process would be, have John Cena work with somebody else, help them get over, have Undertaker work with somebody else and have them get over. But let's really be honest at this point in time. There aren't too many guys on the roster getting over no matter who the fuck they work with. And that's just a fact. So why not get the best, most interesting, compelling matchup that you possibly can? And again, when you have the options, are you going to choose The Undertaker facing somebody like a Rusev or a Roman Reigns or a Dean Ambrose or a Finn Balor or whoever the fuck? Or does it make more sense to have somebody the star power of a John Cena face off against a legend and icon like The Undertaker? You know, this is this is a different type of icon versus icon match between John Cena versus The Rock. Where I understand some of the storytelling elements that were naturally in place there, I think there are more interesting and compelling storytelling elements here, whereas Taker's been the locker room leader for so many years, Cena has tried to assume that mantle for the past several years. You know, one guy who is arguably the greatest of all time, the other guy who the WWE loves to tell you is the greatest of all time. I mean, I know right now that this company probably is pointing themselves towards AJ Styles and John Cena for the title at WrestleMania, and Cena wins number 16 there, and then they're going to do Randy Orton versus The Undertaker. And in theory, some of that stuff could work, but some of that could flop too. I just, I just pose this to you from, from a story standpoint. Imagine at the Royal Rumble, it's John Cena, it's AJ Styles, it's for the WWE title. And you get to that moment in time where it looks like, oh, it's the same old Cena bullshit, skipty skip, whoop de woo number 16, here we go, blow my brains out now. And all of a sudden, as Cena's about to hit the AA, the freaking lights go out. And the gong hits. And the smoke comes out. And out steps The Undertaker. And he doesn't say shit. And he really doesn't do shit. He just stands there. And he looks. And as the lights come back on, AJ Styles pulls some shenanigans. And he ends up beating John Cena and retains his title. And then he can be off maybe to uh, defend his title at Mania against the Royal Rumble winner. Now think about that. Doing that type of spot at that moment at the Royal Rumble, man, you're off to the races, and it's, to me, a little bit of a license to print money with Cena and Taker. And the way you can have Taker approach this is very simple. I'm tired of John Cena being talked about as the greatest of all time. I'm tired of him sitting there and getting all of these accolades. I throw up at the thought of him potentially tying Ric Flair's record for 16 world titles, and he'll do it over my dead man body. So it's a way to have Taker kind of approach it as kind of heel, but also from an understandable way that is still relatable enough where people are still really going to like him. And at the end of the day, we all know 
that Cena most certainly is not going to get cheered against The Undertaker at WrestleMania. You know, and the, the thing is, well, if you turn Randy Orton heel and you got people naturally trying to boo him, putting him in that spot against The Undertaker at WrestleMania, he'll get booed and the heat that these guys will actually have to work with will be really good and helpful to the match. And you may be right, but if you send Cena out there under a certain context and position, frankly, that he's very familiar with working in for the past several years, and now you know going in that no matter what you do, Taker is the hero and Cena's not. And Taker's the one everybody wants to win, and Cena's not. Um, the dynamics of the match work so much better than anything that Orton and Taker could possibly dream of. Not only that, we've seen Taker and Cena wrestle before, but this is many, many years ago, and it's never happened at WrestleMania. I've seen Orton Taker at WrestleMania 21. That match was very good, and I have no, absolutely little desire, zero desire, frankly, to see that match again at WrestleMania 33. When you think about the box office, when you already kind of look ahead to WrestleMania 33, the card doesn't exactly stand out as being overwhelmingly awesome. When you're going to get like Brock Lesnar, Shane McMahon, maybe AJ Styles is defending one title. Maybe you've got Triple H versus Seth Rollins. I mean, it's a mediocre looking card. And that card really needs a special event type of match, something that can really help lift that card up and elevate the profile of the show. And I think the easiest and most effective way for the WWE to get that is by doing John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 33. It's a money match, and everybody knows it, whether they want to see it or not. It's a money match. It's a big money match. It's one of the biggest money matches this company still has. So from a pure business standpoint alone, why would you not do it? If I've only got one more Taker match at WrestleMania, would I rather spend it on Randy Orton? Or would I rather spend it on John Cena? And if I'm trying to get the most out of an Undertaker uh, program on the road to WrestleMania and the match at WrestleMania, would I rather spend that on Randy Orton? Or would I rather spend that on John Cena? And the simple answer to all of these questions to me is John Cena. And when you talk about a veteran that can help protect The Undertaker, John Cena in some ways can be that guy because he's shown some willingness to flip and bump when required. But Taker is also a really good opponent, in my opinion, for John Cena because he will force John Cena to do something that Cena, in my opinion, has always struggled with, and that is actually being able to hit home on the psychology of a match and being able to actually tell a cohesive, legitimate, understandable story in the ring with this match. So often Cena just kind of randomly throws bumps and spots into the mix and hopes it all sticks together. And frankly, sometimes it does very nicely, and other times it just really doesn't, and it seems like a discombobulated mess. Now you get him in the ring with an undertaker. These two in the ring, that's the story. It would be incredible. It wouldn't be as incredible as if the streak was still alive, could you imagine? But I implore the WWE, you make a lot of bad decisions. This is one decision that I think would be incredibly beneficial. It's one decision that I truly believe would be best for business. The Undertaker should face none other than Breakfast Club member John Cena at WrestleMania 33. Agree with me if you want, because you're smart. Disagree with me if you want. Because you like to rub baby oil all over yourself. I don't know. But it's got to be Undertaker John Cena at WrestleMania, period.